What made you decide to speak your mind, take positions, and be outspoken? Uh, I learned that halfway through my rookie year because I remember the moment it happened. You know, I was like, I'm, I'm trying to learn. I'm listening to everybody because, I, I, you know, like I said earlier, everybody want to be liked. I'm just like, you know, I'm just so lucky and blessed and I thank God and blah, 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 blah. The sisters called me in the next day they're like, hey, um, we don't want you talking about God on TV anymore. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, oh, we got a bunch of calls from some agnostic and some atheists. I'm like, what? We can't talk about God. So that was my first one. And then I started, you know, it doesn't matter what you say. You can't make everybody happy. Yeah. And that was the toughest part for me. I see, I'm a little kid from a small town in Alabama. And like, you know, I've never, nobody's ever hated on me before. And then I start just paying attention like, oh, it doesn't matter what you say. Half the people going to like it. So I made it my mind. I said, okay, I've got to be able to look myself in the mirror. Mm-hmm. And and I always preface it. I said, that don't mean I'm right all the time, but I'm going to try to speak my truth and my rightness. I says, I'm not, because if somebody want me to say something, I said, I can't, that's not my answer. And I hope people agree with me or like it. But halfway through my rookie year, I realized, like, man, it doesn't matter what you say. Half these people are going to like it and half of them going to hate you. So you might as well say what you, you believe. You might as well say what you believe. Now, yeah. that, so I learned that halfway through my rookie year. And I, from that point on, I'm like, you know what? Hey, this is my truth. I'm going to tell you what I think if you ask me a question. And even when people walk up to me on the street, they're like, hey, you know what? I don't agree with everything you say, but I believe you come from a, a place of peace. Yeah. And, like, you ain't just saying stuff just to get clickbait. I said, no, man, I'm on, I, like I say, I don't think I'm right all the time, but I'm going to try to be fair to you and honest with you. Yeah. Because I think it's important. I think it's really important uh, being on television to tell the truth. Oh, yeah. Because there's somebody in Montana, Maine, South Dakota, they're never going to meet me more than likely. And I want them to say, I want them to say, that guy's going to be honest with me. He's not just trying to get my attention. And, and that means a great deal to me. Yeah. Well, for sure. And if you, I, I got this belief, if you're not honest, people know it. Yeah. I mean, they, if they, they do. They watch you. Yeah. They know that's bullshit. Yeah, they do. I, I totally he agree he with that. He doesn't believe that. He doesn't believe that. You made the commercial for Nike, I'm not a role mm-hmm. model. Uh, did you believe that? I, I did. It, 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 what I was trying to do, uh, I remember, and that's probably, even to this day, probably the thing I'm most proud of because it always starts a debate. So I went to Nike, I think it was 89. I said, I want to make this commercial. And they're like, are you freaking nuts? I says, I says okay, so we're going to start a debate mm-hmm. about the role model thing. And I says, this, you're going to get killed. I said, I can handle it. I'm a big boy. Uh, and I said, this is, well, why do you want to make the commercial? I says, I noticed something. Okay, y'all have us speaking at all these schools. And a lot of these schools are segregated. And I says, when I go to a, uh, a white school, I always say, uh, well, a predominantly white school. I said, well, how many of y'all want to play in the NBA? Only like 5 to 7%. I said, well, what do you want to do? I want to be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, a teacher, fireman, policeman. I'm like, okay. And I go to the predominantly black school. I said, how many of y'all want to play sports in the NBA? It was pretty much 100%. Then I realized these kids are brainwashed to think they can only be successful through athletics and entertainment. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I I did like a three-year window where I was like going to these schools. And I said, hey, pay attention. Watch watch this here. The people who who were around me. And they're like, these black kids think they can only be successful through athletics and entertainment. And these white kids, like they want to be doctors, lawyers, engineers. And I says, well, I want these black kids to think like that. And it just gave me a platform. And yeah, and, and the media, which what they do, they always tell you what you meant to say. Yeah. I said, no, I know what I meant to say. <laughs> and I, I, I was just trying to start a debate. And the thing about Nike, Nike was like, you're not going to believe this. I think 90% of the letters we're getting are positive. I said, first of all, I knew the letters were going to be positive because my message was positive. I'm yeah. not trying to shirk my responsibility of being a role model. I'm trying to start a debate, and then I can say exactly what I mean to say. 
And even when I'm asked about that question today, I says, can I explain? I wasn't trying to, like, athletes are role models, but I don't want young black kids thinking they can't do uh, things other than play sports and be entertainers. So I got, I kind of got my point across, but like I say, I, I'm not worried about taking no heat. Yeah. I said, I just wanted, like, part of, part of being in this thing and having this platform, you should, uh, be able to talk about anything, and sometimes it's going to be unpopular. Uh, you know, like but it starts a debate. Yes, 